Good evening, Warden. How do your prisoners fare? Commander, all is well. If you like, I could show you... I'm not here to inspect your prison, Warden. I'm here to speak about one prisoner. Ah, oh, your apostle. Alvane. He's an apostle no more. He was a tool, but he lost his edge. He's no longer of any use to us. No. It's time we put all of this behind us. Would you care to translate, Commander? I'm afraid my ability to read between the lines is somewhat lacking. We want Kian Alvane's execution to be... hastened. I see. I, I thought your six would need to judge and condemn Alvani before... When did you become an expert on Azadi law, Warden? I'm not, sir, but we have laws and regulations of our own, Commander. I, I was told that Kian Alvani would be sent to Sadir to and stand... I I am telling you to carry out his sentence. Tonight! What? Uh, uh, impossible. Uh, I, I need to call in the executioner and... How soon? Well, by first light, at the earliest, but still... First light, then. But what about the paperwork? I mean, the proper documents, signed and stamped. This goes one of two ways, Warden. Either you do what you're told, and execute Kian Alvani by first light. Or you find yourself hanging right next to him when the sun kisses the top of Friar's Keep tomorrow morning. How it plays out is entirely up to you. You have your orders, Warden. Barbarians. I have only one memory of my mother. She held me close one night and sang an old song from her country. I don't remember the melody, but I remember the words. Sleep, child, sleep. Sleep in your mother's heart. Let the wind blow and the rain fall. Hear the executioner's call. Watch the traitor's head roll as the shadow takes his soul. Sleep, child, sleep. We shall never part, for we will soon be free, together forever in the cold, cold sea. Ah, Alvani, you are here. Good. I hear you uh, turned down your last meal. Hmm, pity. I personally approve the menu. There were, uh... <clears throat> Sausages. Why would the warden come to visit me now? He wants me to plead. I shall not. At this point, I think Kian is probably giving him the silent treatment. Hmm, quite. You were always a man of few words, Alvani. A rational pragmatist to the end. I approve. As you know, your execution will take place at dawn. I have to admit that I'm, I'm curious why, after so long, there's such a sudden rush to see you dead. I'm very curious. But uh, <clears throat> that's not why I'm here, no. As you also know, you have the choice between hanging and beheading. As far as I can tell, you have yet to um, voice a preference. If you forfeit this choice, it'll be left to... Me to decide the uh, <clears throat> instrument of death. I simply want to ensure we've dotted every I and crossed every T. Yeah, it seems the warden is right because if Zoe is correct in saying that she's been in a coma for a year, and when she fell into the coma was about the same time that Kian was arrested, and it's three months later according to the caption just before this scene, then he's been rotting in this prison for about 15 months. So why suddenly is uh, Mr. Grumpy Pants asking for him to be executed immediately? So something's up. Again, I don't think Kian is going to be interested in 
voicing a preference as to how he's going to die. I think he's just resigned to the fact that he is going to die. Death is death, and I'm ready to embrace my own. I have nothing more to say to this man. Quite. Then I shall make that choice. <clears throat> Do you have no family, Elvani? My family is very important to me, almost as important as my duty to this city and this office. In the event of my own death, it would pain me to know that they would be left with no answers, no body to bury, no closure. I, I know you're a man of faith, a man of principle. I also understand that things happen to hmm, make you question your calling. What I do not understand is why you've um, <clears throat> simply decided to give up, to, um, to stop fighting. I have nothing more to say to him. To have everything you believe in fall to pieces. To be asked to continue a war that you have no faith in. By commanders that you can no longer trust. I think this question might be enough to get him to actually talk. You would not understand. Try me, Alvani. You may come to see that we're more alike than you thought. I have no family. No country. So leave me be. And let me prepare for death in peace. Very well. Everything has been uh, properly filed. I have no reason to question the order of execution. It even threatened me with dismissal, and worse, should I stand in the way of their orders. They don't know me very well. Threats mean nothing. Proper paperwork, on the other hand. Well, I will simply have to <clears throat> accept that my questions will remain forever unanswered. Well, I shall see you at first light, Alvani. The noose will be ready for you. Kian, there isn't much time. About bloody time. Come on, let's go. Hello. What's going on? No time for answers. Let's get a move on. You may notice that sometimes uh, the items that you might be able to interact with have a circle uh, and cross over them. That just means that you're not supposed to interact with anything right now. What's going on down there? That boy is a major order riot. We're getting you out of here. Who are you? Do I know you? I bloody well hope so. You were this close to running me through with your sword. What? The Swamp City? Precisely. Where I made a daring, swashbuckling last-minute escape, and you were arrested by your own commander. Quite a day, eh? If you're with the Resistance, why are you helping me escape? So that you can repay your debt? and help free our city. In the meantime, we need a bloody key to get through this bloody gate. Okay, now we can interact with things. So yes, uh, we met him in the previous game, although again, visually he looks a lot different now. Um, but you can kind of tell because even in the original game he had a hook for one hand and a peg leg. And he uh, still has the peg leg, though he seems to have lost the hook at some point. Uh, he was one of the... He was a pirate captain who was a close friend of April Ryan and was a supplier for the rebels before they were uh, burned out of the Swamp City. What a filthy mess this place is. No Azadi-run prison would ever be so poorly looked after. These Northlanders take little pride in their endeavors. What a filthy mess this place is. No Azadi-run prison would ever be so poorly looked after. Goddess willing, this is the last I'll ever see of this cell. Whatever happens next, I won't be back. A year is time enough spent in captivity. I'd rather die than return here. Has it really been nearly a year? What a waste of time, of life. They made me shit in a bucket and live with the stench of it. This is truly a foul place. I hope it burns to the ground. I've degraded myself. 
living like an animal. I may not be an apostle anymore, but I am still Azadi. I bring shame to the goddess and my people living like this. I've degraded myself, living like an animal. I may not be an apostle anymore, but I am still Azadi. I bring shame to the goddess and my people living like this. Locked. The riot hasn't reached this floor yet. Most of the prisoners are still under lock and key. Not everyone in here is a wrongly convicted rebel. Some are violent murderers. I won't risk it. So I guess Kian is not going to be freeing anyone else. Hey! Hey! Help me! He's still breathing. I've seen him around the prison. I don't think he's been here that long. And I don't think hey, he's you. long for this world. Over! <coughs> he looks badly hurt. I don't think he'll survive long. But we can't just leave him here either. How are you feeling? Can you walk? No. I've... I've lost... too much blood. T <coughs> Take the key from the guard's pocket. Save yourselves. There must be something we can do for him. Anything. I can't save his life, but perhaps he has some last wish that I can fulfill. I can maybe see Kian basically looking for something noble to do at this point. He's lost all other direction in his life. So this actually kind of makes sense, I think. Is there anything I can do for you? Anything at all? My... <coughs> My family. Tell them. Tell them what happened to me. Tell them I love them very much. And that... <coughs> My children. Tell them they make me proud. I have to promise. I have to fulfill this man's dying wish. No matter what. I promise. They live in the bones. My name is Stont. Arn Stont. Thank you. Please. <coughs> Please finish me before the cards find me. I can kill they him swiftly. Find. A warrior's death. They will make... <coughs> or leave him for the guards they to torture. They will make me suffer. First, let's get the key. It appears to be a gate key. It probably unlocks this first gate. It's a makeshift blade. I've seen how they make them by sharpening stolen spoons against stone. A deadly weapon in the right hands. Apparently so. Looks like uh, that's how this guard was taken out. Kill me. Please. It's a heavy key, fashioned from Please iron. Kill me. It fits the locked gate on this floor. The Northlanders once valued iron higher than gold. Most likely because of its anti-magical properties. It's a heavy key, fashioned from iron. It fits the locked gate on this floor. A shiv. It did its job on that guard. It's a shiv. Okay. So now we do have the choice of whether or not to put the prisoner out of his misery. Kill me. Please. <coughs> Please kill me. This is an innocent man. I can't simply murder him. In the face of my own death, I swore to never take another life. Perhaps the guards will show mercy and spare him. If I don't kill him now, the guards will. But not before they make him suffer. I cannot leave him to such a gruesome fate. And we got about a 70-30 split for granting him death. Um, and to be fair, I think uh, a lot of this might come from replays, because if you do let him live, the guards will not spare him. They, in fact, will torture him. So best to uh, put him out of his misery before that happens, I think. If I do May the goddess ease your journey into the next life.
He's with the goddess now, walking the sun-blessed slopes of the first mountain. It had to be done, Kian. You made the right choice. You have the key? Excellent. Now unlock the gate. They have different keys for every floor, so you might as well leave that one in the lock. Follow me, boy. We're going up, not down. Seems like the captain approves of our choice there, as gruesome as it was. Upwards. Ever upwards. Now, in the previous game, we saw the lower levels of this prison, but I don't think we've ever seen the upper levels. Down there, you'll only find fiery death. The way out of here is up, up, up. What did you mean, repay a debt? You damn near wiped us out, boy. Your last-minute reversal didn't help save anyone, aside from your own soul, mayhap. And now is your chance at repentance. I don't want repentance. I'm ready to die for my crimes. Why don't you just leave me here? You may be ready to die, Kian, but the Resistance certainly isn't. And we need you. Now, find a way to open this bloody door. Something long and thin to pick the lock might do the trick. The riot is growing. Moving closer. We need to keep moving up. Find a way out before the keep becomes smoking rubble. Are those? Yes. Those are head bugs. They burrow through the skin into the skull where they lay their eggs. Months later, the larvae devour their victim's brain. Oh, fun. I believe this was once white. They're not diligent with their washing in this place. And yet we have to take the uh, parasite-ridden piece of uh, fabric anyway. Uh, just don't hold on to it too closely. From the right angle, this pillow might pass as a head. A very square and soft head. A filthy head. <laughs> That's actually part of the hint as to what to do next. You can get another from examining the window. There he is, up there. He got away. The keep is surrounded by soldiers. Mostly Azadi troops, it looks like. Good bowmen. I'm lucky I dodged their arrows. So we need something to pick the lock on that door with. Since there's no key up here from any guards. A broom. Still a broom. <laughs> Stare at a broom long enough, it turns into... No. Just a broom. <laughs> so this one yeah there's that's our uh, decision playing out there um, if you had not killed him you'll start to hear the guards torturing him at this point Um, so, uh, this took me a little bit, a little while to figure out my first time through, but basically we need something long and pointy to pick that lock with, and, uh, we can get something like that. If we combine these two items. So from a distance it looks like someone's looking out the window, but it won't actually be our real head. I think we got him. <laughs> it's undamaged and thin enough to fit in a lock. I should be able to open the gate with this. Poor bowmen think they've shot Keon. <laughs> that ought to do the trick. Go on, pick the lock with the arrow. Good job. Follow me. All those years on the streets of Sadia paying off. The riot won't last forever. Something's going to give. Either the watch kills every last man, or the prisoners tear this place to pieces. 
That was mentioned in the previous game. Kian is not noble-born. He grew up on the streets of the capital of the Azadi. Why, if it isn't our old friend Mr. Murren. I'll say back him. I should have known you wouldn't have let yourself get caught so easily. You're damn right. Now let us through. I'm afraid that's uh, quite impossible, Balsay. Your journey ends here, I'm afraid. There's no pick in this one. He's plugged it from his side. By the Mojo's unclean genitals, Warden! Open up right this bloody minute! Words, 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 Mr. Backy. You know very well I do not respond to threats. When I get my hands on you, Warden, you will wish your grandmother had never spread her legs to your grandfather. The Warden has blocked the gate somehow. The warden the mojo has blocked before the gate you somehow. filthy arsehole, Murren. Let us through right bloody now. Now you might think there's some uh, item on this floor that One you can use. You will see you garroted in front of this entire city and your family too. But it turns out that there is nothing on this floor. You just have to negotiate your way through the warden. He doesn't look warden. well at all, seeing his world fall to pieces. I almost pity the man. He doesn't look well at all, seeing his world fall to pieces. I'm afraid I this is uh, <clears throat> as far as you will get. Now, he already he said he doesn't respond to threats. Respond to violence and threats. He's scum, and I should treat him as such. So you might expect that this option will not get you that far. So we can try to reason with him instead. I could attempt to reason with him. See if he responds to that. Your prisoners are revolting, Warden. Sooner or later, they will reach this floor. Let me through, and I shall be lenient and merciful. I see. And what, pray tell, is my guarantee that you'll follow through on your <clears throat> promise? I may not be able to stay my anger. He's responsible for many innocent deaths. But if I can convince him to believe me, what choice does he have? I was the Apostle. I was always true to my word. Doesn't the Warden claim to be a practical man? If that's the case, he would listen to a practical argument. Mm, that is true. He did emphasize that when we spoke with him last. My leniency is your only hope at this point. Hmm, perhaps. But as you may imagine, I didn't rise to my position by taking people at their word. Particularly in a prison. Honesty is in <clears throat> short supply in here. We're running out of time, and this filthy heathen is the only thing between us and freedom. All men of his station can be bought. If I offer to buy him, I'm sure he will be swayed, filthy maggot that he is. If he fails to respond to threats to his own life, maybe he'll listen if I threaten his children. I'm not sure Kian has gotten to the point where we're threatening children here. He may treasure his office above his blood, but maybe he will listen to reason if I appeal to his sense of family. He did say that he was a family man. If not for yourself, then do this for your family. Hmm, my family is important to me. I would not want my boys to grow up without a father. Their mother... <clears throat> Lacks the moral fortitude needed to instill duty and backbone in them. Let's forgive her. She's a good woman, but merely a woman. Very well, you make a fair point. I will trust you despite my better instincts. Step back, Albani. Praise your gods, I don't have time for you now, Murren. But your day will come. You gave me your word, Alvani. Your word? You said I would not be harmed. You said you would let me live. Does that not count for anything anymore? Is your word so disposable you will throw it away at a whim? If you kill me, you've proven your disregard for the law. You've proven that you're a simple brute. If I kill you, I rid the world of a piece of sadistic vermin who sold out his own people. Look who's... who's talking. Who's the traitor here? I am merely an elected official. I do not decide who lives or dies. That's for the law to decide, for courts and judges and... and... other elected officials. 
who are perfectly willing to carry out orders without question, as long as they can hide behind the chain of command. A system cannot function without bureaucracy and bureaucrats. It cannot function without a hierarchy. If you want to change that, go to the top. Oh, believe me, I will. Don't. Please, spare my life. You will receive your just punishment soon enough. <coughs> Perhaps so, Avani, but at least my punishment... <coughs> at least my punishment will be at the hands of those who respect laws and regulations. And not a... And be a barbarian like yourself. <coughs> Pressing your luck, Warden. You know, notice that there is a hint here as to where the story is going for Keon. Um, the warden said, you know, if you want to change all these things, you need to go to the top. And Keon said, oh, I will. So a little bit of foreshadowing there. Perhaps that's another one of his newer motivations. This is as far as the stairwell will take us. Now we need to find a way to the roof. I didn't say I wanted to leave this place. What part of to be executed in the morning did you not get? And what part of the resistance needs you did you fail to comprehend? Why would your people trust me? I am their enemy. <laughs> you were the enemy. I trust your allegiance to your people has diminished somewhat in the past year. How do you know I won't just turn on you soon as we're out of here? Oh, I know, and others do too. Our faith is rarely misplaced. This passage leads up to the roof, but the gate's twice locked. There's no getting through. There's we no way through here. Another way up. I got you this far, Kian. Now you need to put that Azadi brain of yours to work, and quick. Again, on this floor, you can look around, but uh, there's actually not much else to see. Be damned. The guards are getting closer. Other than the barrels here. They're not far behind us. The slop we eat three times a day arrives in these barrels. The stench makes me sick. So many barrels. Do they never clean up after themselves? I feel a kinship with that lonely, flickering flame. Kian is waxing a little poetic now. We don't have now. much time. I knew a Chandler once. He didn't burn his candle at both ends. Laziest man I ever met. A candle loses nothing by lighting another. Very deep, Kian. <laughs> a piece of cloth. Moist. With what, I'd rather not know. So we can take that. I've eaten the slop they call porridge for so long I've forgotten the taste of meat. What I wouldn't have done for a single bite of that meal. I wonder if this was the Keon's last meal that he refused, so someone else ate it. I draw the line at licking the plate clean. I'm hungry for red meat, but I'm not a dog. It's a speaking tube. Where's the key? Hello? Someone get the keys. Anyone there? I'm speaking into a metal tube. I feel foolish. <laughs> well, April used it uh, in the previous game. She also used the dumbwaiter, which is actually standing right here. This is probably what delivered that meal. And actually, once again, it's going to be the dumbwaiter that uh, helps us in Friar's Keep. They use this contraption to transport food from the kitchens below. That chain goes up to the mechanism that raises and lowers the cage. And that it's mechanism thick oil. probably is near the uh, roof, which is where we're supposed to be going, according to the pirate captain. It's covered in thick oil. Ah, I can't get a good grip on it with all that oil. Well, we do have a stick and a cloth. And even if the idea doesn't strike you, if you just do a little experimenting, you find you can put them together into a makeshift torch. 
see if he says anything about it. A moist face towel on a stick. A rather sad torch, and one I fear will not stay lit for long. Alright, so can we use it on the candle here? Shadow. I need a stronger flame to light this torch. Oh, yep, it wicked out there. But turns out we have much more uh, stronger torches along the edge here. These torches burn day and night. There's no other light in this accursed place. There we go. I'm curious to see where this is going. Now, before it burns out. Where's the key? Someone get the ghost down keys! The iron bars are making the oil is burning off. Oh, clever boy. I knew you wouldn't disappoint me. Still warm, but it's cooling quickly. It's like they're trying I to should be able to climb the chain now. Shoot us with arrows. That chain's still hot. I want some warning. <laughs> they're trying to shoot us with arrows, but uh, the bars around the stairwell is making it hard. Right behind. So, let's climb up to the roof. They've readied the noose for you. A traitor's death. What are we doing here? Where's our cloud ship? We need to buy ourselves some time. Quick, block that gate. Use the lever to lower the bar. Quick and good. Now arm yourself. A good and true blade. There's a sword over there. It's excellent quality. A good headsman can take someone's life with one swing of this. Come over here now. Just want to look at the news first. The gallows. And to think, By I the already mojo, accepted my fate. Stop fucking about and get your ass over here, boy. Okay, okay. Jeez, it's like there's running out of time or something. Kian, listen to me. There's not much time. How will we escape? I thought you'd have a ship waiting. A ship? <laughs> no, boy. Your way out of here is not on a cloud ship, but through a portal created by the very magic your people are trying to stamp out. My way. Only one of us can pass through that portal before it closes. And it requires a sacrifice. It's dark magic. It requires blood. And pain. It requires a life. What? No. No. I cannot accept your sacrifice. Either both of us leave or neither. Don't be a mojo, damned fool, boy. I have made my peace with the gods. And you say the same. Besides, I may be a decent fighter, but you... Without you, the resistance will falter, and the Azadi will be victorious. Now run me through with that sword so that you can get out of here and start paying your debts. Here we have uh, another mechanic, which is kind of nice, um, is they have a time limit here. So it's, and it goes at a pace where, you know, you don't feel like you immediately have to choose, but you do have to pick one or the other um, before it just defaults to one of them. His eyes speak the truth. He has embraced death in a way I never could. Where I only saw defeat, he sees victory. I don't know where this path may lead, but what choice do I have? Goddess, forgive me. Slow and steady, boy. Blood and pain for the portal. Asleep. That 
night. She threw herself from the city walls into the shallows. Her body was never found. For the longest time, I would climb those walls, balance on the edge, and close my eyes. I always thought I would join her in the darkness, in that cold, cold sea. But I never did. Goddess, damn him to the Shadow Eternal! What? Kian. Kian has escaped the keep. Leave us. Now! What are you saying? That's impossible. He's supposed to die. He's gone. Fled from the roof with the help of a rebel infiltrator and a bloody riot. The roof? But how? A portal. Dark magic. That's impossible. I must interrogate the men who let him escape. They will rue this day for the rest of their short and miserable lives. And that boneheaded warden, he will pay for this with his life. I don't understand. Friar's Keep is warded against Thaumaturgy. Inside, yes, which is why they fled to the roof. My protectors, do you have any idea where he is? With the rebels, I'm sure. Wherever they've holed up. I will leave no stone unturned to find them. In their hands, Alvane is a poisonous dagger. You think I'm not aware? You think I don't know how dangerous he is? I know that traitor better than anyone. But I will find him. Him and his cohorts. Under the sight of the goddess, this I swear. Before the first arrives. It won't reach her ears. You make sure of that. If she learns their precious apostle is still alive, she will want him alive so that she can speak to him. And if she learns the truth... We won't give her the opportunity. Good. Because if she ever does, you and I will be paying with our lives. What in the light are you waiting for? You won't catch him in here, Commander. Go! Take care of this! Goddess, watch it. It's our three-month anniversary today. That's mad. I feel like I've been coming here for years. <laughs> How are you? What do you think? You have more energy. You appear more content with your life now than you did three months ago. But only you can tell how you are feeling. Hmm? I, I, I can't do that for you. I know. You remember nothing of what happened before the coma. You're not sure you want to remember. I think you do. Do you agree with that, Zoe? Well, I remember that the Vagabond said that she would, in fact, forget all of her memories from the dream time. It seems that that's true. Um, but he said that she had to do everything to try to remember. So I would guess there's some part of her that does want to remember. And potentially lose everything I've built here. I know there's something I need to remember, something I'm supposed to be doing. Until I figure that out, I can't find peace. I do. I can't stand feeling there's something I need to remember. So I have to find out. I understand, okay. Let's see if we can do an exercise. Jog your memory. What is the last thing you do remember? Dropping out of uni and moving back in with Dad. I'd lost... Lost faith in myself and everyone around me. I'd broken up with Reza. And then something did happen. Be careful what you wish for, right? 
Razor vanishing. Me going after him, trying to track him down. I ended up in Newport. I remember being in a safe place and connecting to a dream machine. But that's where it ends. And before that? Before leaving Casablanca? Reza asked me to pick up a package. That's what set it all in motion. That and the static. Now, do you remember what that turned out to be? After I woke up, they filled in the blanks. Apparently it was some sort of glitch or virus. Rogue code infecting the worldwide wire. Someone at Watercorp was using the dream machine to read people's minds. Someone I'd met. Kavanagh. Damien Kavanagh. The man behind it all. The perpetrator of the conspiracy. He'd put some sort of worm into the code, turning the dream machine into a mind-controlling tool affecting millions. At least that's... that's what they say. He recorded a confession before he... At least he came clean. Absolved his employer of any wrongdoing. Convenient. In what way? I'll forget it. I don't remember any of it. All I know is they poisoned my mind. Inserted false memories. Nothing I saw or experienced was real. The little girl on the screens, the other... The other world. Arcadia. Another colorful figment of their imagination. A synthetic dream. And you still remember nothing of going to Japan? Breaking into Watikorp? Nope. I exposed a global conspiracy and all they gave me was a lousy coma. Aside from you, Reza, and my dad, no one even knows I was involved. Reza kept me out of his expose. And even he doesn't know what really happened during the week I was gone. Maybe my friend Olivia knew something, but she... passed away. You feel responsible. I went off playing teen detective and people got hurt. You're worried something else happened to you. I mean, it's a week of my life. Gone. Have you used a dream machine yet? God, no. I feel nauseous just watching the ads. It's becoming... a disease. An addiction. I'm concerned about what these lucid, perfect dreams are doing to us. And you were connected to a prototype. There's no way to predict how that may have affected you. Have you spoken with Gabrielle yet? No, I'm... I'm not ready to discuss my dad. We don't talk. He rented out the house, moved to Mumbai. That's perfectly fine. What do you want to talk about? Is the new series of Eurotrash a valid topic? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Our time is almost up. That's fine. I'm working today. How's that going? Really good. I enjoy it. A lot. I'm glad to hear that. You weren't so sure a month ago. I'm learning a lot. Neural programming, artificial intelligence. It helps me feel closer to live. Olivia, you know? Honoring her memory. Not in a self-sacrificing way. I, I want to do this. I like working with Mira and Wit, for now. And with the voluntary campaign work, I feel I contribute in other ways, too. You're keeping yourself busy and motivated. You've come a long way since we first met. Thank you, Dr. Zelenka. A Roman, uh, please. <laughs> Same time next week? Definitely. Thanks, Doc. Roman. Roman. <laughs> Take care, Zoe. All right, so it's been three months, apparently, since Zoe woke up from the coma. But unfortunately, it seems like her memories have been not just... Uh, some of them have not just been removed, but others have been uh, filled with false information from Wadi Corp. For example, uh, while it is true that David Kavanaugh did put a uh, virus or a worm into the system... The reason was so that he could actually determine uh, and discover what Wadi Corp was trying to do as far as controlling people's minds. So he was trying to unmask the conspiracy. But sounds like uh, 
he ended up taking the blame for it instead. Um, he had had a brief romantic uh, fling with Zoe, um, and when we last talked to him, it was on a it was over a message where he said that he was going to try to hide from Wadi Corp, but I guess they caught up with him. Also, we're told that Liv, who had been helping Zoe, is also now dead. Uh, again, probably killed off by Wadi. Now, again, I, I don't. It doesn't bother me uh, from a story point of view that these characters are being killed off because you know, again, it's it's part of the drama of the story overall. But I do wish that they wouldn't be killing these characters off screen, so to speak, with just some throwaway lines. It would have been nicer if we actually had some scenes or spend a little bit more time reflecting on the fact that they are now dead um, or have some instance of them of something they left behind pop up in the story but I don't think that uh, that happens either so emotionally it's not very satisfying Um, I will critique them on that I think they should have done something more Um, it's fine to, to kill off characters in a story, but you need to have some kind of emotionally satisfying conclusion to characters that you've grown uh, to know or become attached to. And it's always jarring when that doesn't happen. All right, we saw the message about the journal. And just as in previous uh, incarnations of The Longest Journey, you do, uh, the main character does keep journal entries, so we'll be referring to those, especially to these, because they take us from the moment where she woke up from the coma up to about the present time. Yeah. The latest entry was July 24th. It's currently July 27th in the game. Also, here's where we can access the character library. Here are all the characters we've been introduced to so far. Um, So again, I think I might start off the next session by looking at some of these. All right, but I think this session is going to be ended for now. And when we come back, we will explore uh, Dr. Roman's office here and go out and see the rest of the town, which is Propast. So we're no longer in Newport or Casablanca or anything like that. We're in a brand new location. Um... This is kind of the center of the of futuristic Europe's, uh, European civilization, apparently. So, until next time, fellow adventurers, take care.